Hi everybody, Daniel here again from Tectonic Workshops, all the way down here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, we're in lockdown here for four weeks due to the COVID-19 virus, and I've been scrounging around the workshop, wanting to make a new set of wings. Um, we're a bit empty in here at the moment because we've just sent some commissions away, and um, it's really sad to come to the workshop, and there's not much to look at, it looks empty. So I thought, I want to make a new set of wings. Um, specifically, I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of a steampunk um, costume for my wife. Um, I've got some really nice hardwood slats of timber here, which I think would be really good for making the wing struts. Um, so I've set up my wing jig here. This is the jig I use for working out the measurements. As you can see, it's just a matter of um, setting it up and measuring. This is actually just, um, it's kind of like Meccano. It's steel with heck of a lot of holes drilled in it um, at about 10 mil spacings. So by doing that you can set it up and really easily find the position to put your bolts. Then measure your pivot points and strut lengths um, and go from there and then just transfer those measurements into your material. Um, I find it works really, really well. Um, basically, if we've got a customer that says, I want such and such size wings, it's not a problem. We just work that out on the um, on the jig here. At the moment, it's set out for a four meter set of wings. So um, basically, that gives you a two meter wing each side of your body. Um, and then you go from there. Um, you'll notice that the actual armature itself is not two meters, but time you build a wing on it, and put your feathers or dragon fingers or whatever you want to do on it that actually runs further off the end of this digit uh, we call this the digit um, the final one because um, that's what it's called on a bird in the skeleton um, so we go from there um, so what you work out is your your final measurement as you go obviously the armature is smaller than what you want your wings to be because the wing material will go out further than that because this is like the skeleton and then you're putting your skin and feathers, ex scales, etc. onto there uh, which makes it bigger. So we're going to have a look at that today. Um, I'm going to do try and do like a um, series of videos and high speed photos as well put together so it looks like a speed build. Um, but at first what I'm going to do is um, put this over to a speed build of me working out the measurements for this set of wings. I think I want to go quite small, just a small cute set of steampunk wings. I'm thinking timber and maybe um, some white fabric wings or sort of like a white linen which will look quite cool. Maybe we can get some brass in there and give it that really cool steampunk sort of style. That's the aesthetic we're going for. Um, so yeah, I will jump into this and um, show you how we do it. Okay, so I've just pulled this jig apart. Um, I don't change these two here very much. Um, I won't change the length. Our back brace has a 150 millimeter gap here. Um, the reason being 150 mil or six inch is when I get a tape measure and get someone to turn around and go, right, I'll measure your back. That seems to be the averagely the best size that fits along your scapula area, which is where your arm slash wing would come from. Um, so I've left it at that. Um, I'm not going to change that, it means I can change the whole back brace, um, which is not that difficult, I could re-drill it, um, but we've got those done, so we'll leave those as they are. Um, but I'll change the length of the um, two humerus, what we call the humerus bones here. Um, obviously a bird only has one humerus, but we need to make it articulating. Um, and it's the easiest way to do it, using this pentagraph assembly, and then we'll just work out the lengths of the radius ulna and digit from there. Um, so that will be my next mission and you'll see that next. <laughs> Okay, we've just fast forwarded in time a wee bit. 
Um, so I've got measurements pretty good now, I'm really happy with this. Um, so you can see the movement of that is nice and smooth. Um, you'll notice here I've got it collapsed right in as far as it'll go. Um, there, the wing's never going to go in that far due to the fabric, material, motors, etc. Um, I might actually use a pulley system on this because I think it would be quite cool. Um, but yeah, the wing will usually come in with the digits, for, for ours anyway, hanging straight down vertically or a little bit open from that. Um, yeah, they won't close this much because you just haven't got the gap. You haven't got the room. So basically the wing's going to go from there to there. Now that gives me 800 millimetres um, of wing. And that's not from the centre of the body either. So from the centre of the body, it's probably more like 900. So I'm actually, when I make the wings, this digit here will be extended out to give that a metre. Um, so I'll put an extra 200 on that, and that digit will be out there, and that will give me a nice finger length to string off any fabric. Um, so I'm going to look at that next. I'll lay some paper under it and draw it a basic design. I may even make it out of the hardwood first and then put the paper under it, because I know this is going to work. Um, it's just a matter of making it do so. Awesome. Thank you. Get me back. Um, so what I've done is I've set out the piece of paper here that I'm going to draw my basic design on. Um, I'm just going to leave the armatron and draw around that because I know what I need to do. I've drawn a one metre line on here, I don't know whether you can see it. Um, but that's so I know that's how far I want my wing to go. So I can extrapolate that length of this digit out to there. Um, and I know that everything's going to work fine. Um, doesn't matter really how long this is, the arm is not going to interfere through here. Um, you do have to consider though that when this is folded up, that it is going to hang down and you do not want that to be dragging below your legs. I mean right onto the ground, below your feet I should say. Um, I could probably go myself, our four metre wings, I still had the tips well off the ground. I could probably scrape in a six, definitely a five and a half, not a, no, a four and a half, maybe a five metre set of wings, which I do want to do at some stage. Um, but at the moment I just want to do these little ones with some scraps that I've got lying around in the workshop basically and uh, do a little bit of recycling. So there we go, I will get into designing that wing and um, get back with the next step. to this one meter line. So I'm going to take this armature away now and then I'm left with something I can work my design on. So I will just remove this. Always a great idea to have this armature clamped down really, really strong. Um, if it moves, it's really annoying. It'll muck up your drawing and you've got to start again. So we'll fold this up and put them away for later. Okay, so what I've got here is a very light pencil outline. So I'm just going to make um, where I want my design to start in a nice dark sharpie. So we'll just draw some lines on there very, very quickly. I like this line when the wings open to be fully straight. It gives a really nice finish. So where the humerus runs up into the ulna, I think it is. It's the radius of the ulna. Um, when the wings fully extended, the way I do it anyway is this becomes a completely straight line along the bottom, and um, so yeah, so you end up with two straight lines, which is really nice to work around. 
if you do it, you can set it up so you've got another angle here in the bottom, um, but it just starts to get messy. So let's make life easy on ourselves. This is our main pivot point. It's re uh, the digit pivot point. It's really um, probably going to become the pivot point for the other fingers I run off here. Um, if I find I'm getting a bit um, restricted in room because I'm using timber and not flat aluminium sheet, um, so it's really going to bulk up the thickness, which is going to look horrible. Um, I might actually end up running the fingers down the um, the ulna here or the radius. I can't remember which one it is now, um, but the bottom the bottom member anyway, uh, the bottom strut, I could run those um, in sync down there. I only need about three, I think, in total. It'll be quite a cool look. I want to give it like an almost an old sailing boat sail sort of a look. So I'll give it quite a swooped look. So it should look quite nice. Okay. Right, I'm pretty happy with this design. I think it looks really cool. I'll put some photos of it in later. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the lengths of these struts that I need. Um, I write everything down as I go because I'm terrible and I'll forget. Um, so I'm just going to write it on, on here for now and then I'll transfer it into my book. The secret book of measurements. Um, so this first strut on my rough sketch is it's a little bit over 600 millimetres. Um, I like to round things out a bit, um, so I'd rather Probably make that one 650 and then I'll alter my design a wee bit. Um, it's actually better to round it up to 650 than to round it down to 600. So I'll make that one 650. I always like to round things close um, rather than having 612 millimetres or something random like that. Um, just make it 600. At this stage it's fine and it makes it easy. It makes it easier later when I'm cutting out all the bits. I'm not having to measure down to the millimetre. Um, which I can do, as I've done before. Well, this is 550, that's really good, that's spot on. You get some interesting things when you measure these things that you randomly sketch, sketch out, and sometimes you go, oh wow, it's worked out well. Um, and this one will be 350, so isn't that interesting? So we've got 650, 550, and then 350, so the only one I had to alter was the 650 a wee bit, um, so that's, I've got a feeling that's gonna give a nice mathematical balance, that sounds really good. Okay, um, we'll move on to just altering this design a wee bit. I'm just going to shorten that strut down on my picture. Um, and that also gives me a good um, plan then to use for cutting out patterns for the material as well, which is really good. Okay, so I've lightly sketched out a design here, which I think is going to look quite cool. Um, so I'm just going to sketch it up in a nice sharpie now so that you can see what you think. Um, if anybody's got any comments on the design, let me know, because I'm always keen for criticism, as long as it's constructive. Right, so, um, I'm thinking something like this. And remember, this is only rough at this stage, and this can all be changed. So I've decided I'm going to use the timber, so that's going to make it difficult to stack that all in one pivot point. Um, the timber itself is probably about 12 mils thick, so yeah, we'll be way up there. Um, so I'm going to run the um, outriggers, I guess, or the struts out from um, the centre of each arm. And I think it's going to work quite well. I've checked it on the jig and there's plenty of room. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be quite cool. Try something different is always fun. Um, and we'll see how we go. So, basically, that's going to be my basic outline of the wing. And the struts, I think, are basically going to go up into there. Just remember at this stage, this is a really, really rough sketch, basically. It's just so I can get an idea in my head. These, these things are always very organic. Um, and they do change. But I like that shape. I really like the straight drop from the tip. I think it gives it that, yeah, as I said before, that sort of sailing boat look. I think this curve here is probably a little bit too extreme. Um, I won't curve that much. Let's put as much fabric on there as possible. Um, but yeah, it's a matter of feeling it out and seeing what looks nice and balanced. A lot of it is like 
do it for me is do the design, stand back and look at it. If it, if it looks right, then that's good. If it, sometimes you, you will draw it up and you, like you think it looks good in your head and then when you draw it up you go, no, it just doesn't look balanced. And it just needs a wee bit of a change. The sketches are pretty rough at first. Um, but you'll see as I go through it, I'll refine it. Um, I may even be going to run these struts down in half on my table saw, so the actual struts themselves will be thinner than the armature, which will give a nice look. Right, I found a nice bright red sharpie. Um, that's what I'm going to do to put my final design down on this piece of paper. Um, that's why it's going to stand out from all my rough sketching. So I'm just using a piece of the timber now as a guide. Um, just use it on the arm's edge because that'll be the thickness it'll be when I cut it down lengthways. I think doing the um, struts out of the thinner piece of timber will look really nice and it'll give it a nice balance. Otherwise, I think we're just going to bulk things up too much. So there will be pivot points there, there, and there. Um, pop you back there. And I've decided that I want my sail pieces, because I'm thinking of this more of like a sailing ship rather than a bird or a dragon. And I think that's going to suit the steampunk style really, really nicely. Um, I may even use little ringlets to attach. I might split the sail up so rather than using one piece of fabric. I might have split into one, two, three, four pieces and uh, tie or ringlet it to the strut so it has that really nice old-fashioned sailing boat to the look. I might not. I'll see how I'm feeling. It's quite a small wing and I think by doing that actually that might get a bit too busy. Um, yeah, but I do like it. Okay, how are we going there? That looks good. Right. Okay, so um, I went away and I ripped down those hardwood strips I had on my table saw, which is always frightening to use because it screams at you and has the potential of chucking pieces of timber, especially these nice thin spear shaped pieces back through you. But it all went well, there was no issues, so I was just freaking out for nothing. Uh, but they, they cut out actually beautifully, they've stayed nice and straight, or straight enough. Um, so that will be what I will be using. Um, I decided to chop them right down um, all the way, the whole lot, um, and just use that. I think it works out to be about 12, 13 mil. Uh, about half an inch square, but it's hardwood. It's really, really strong. It's ridiculously strong. It's like, it's as strong as aluminium, if not stronger. Um, so I'll be using that very soon, cutting that down to the section sizes for the armatures and drilling the holes so that's my next task and um, I'll be back soon to show you how that went. Okay through the wonders of modern technology I'm back again. Um, the drilling and cutting of the struts went really well. Um, I drilled one hole in the wrong place because I wrote down the number wrong. I wrote down 150 millimeters instead of 115 and I was scratching my head for a little bit but um, I just got the jig out again and double checked and I was like oh the maths was good, the human component was bad, <laughs> as happens. So we got that right, um, and this is running really nice now. So that opens up to a metre, beautifully, and then that collapses down to 12 centimetres, which is 120 millimetres, which is small. That's small, man, that's really coming in. It'll never come in that small when it's bulked up with fabric, etc. but yeah, it's going to be really good. Um, so really happy with that. Um, the next thing is I'm just going to lay it out on my pattern again and um, just double check my design fits on this. But as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same as the original one. But always like to check twice and cut once. I'm not going to go cutting up fabric that um, I haven't got anyway due to this shutdown. Um, but um, I'll find something around the house. I mean, even if I have to cut up an old bad ripped or broken, destroyed pair of bed sheets or something. Um, we'll get something that looks nice. And um, I'm still deciding whether I make the back brace out of aluminium or timber. I have got some nice plywood floating around that would do for a back brace, um, which I can probably make work and save the aluminium for any commissions that might come in. 
during this hard to get parts time. Um, I think I'll make this um, string pulley activated as well. I do have motors in stocks and linear, linear actuators, but I don't really want to use them on this because I think it'll spoil that sort of old sailing ship sort of aesthetic that I want to go for, that steampunk look. And I think that um, pull strings and maybe some brass pulleys and that will look really, really nice. Um, so yeah, we will see you again soon with some developments. Hi, welcome back to the workshop again. Um, I've been busy this morning finishing off the work that we did yesterday. Um, second day of the build today, so I have built both sides of the wing armatures now. Um, we found some really cool fabric that I think is going to work really well. Um, this is a really nice sort of an old fashioned heavy denim. Um, it's actually an old duvet cover, but it's this nice white with the blue flowers and plants on it, which just gives it that sort of like that, I don't know, that Chinese porcelain sort of look, which I think will really go awesomely with the steampunk look. So we've got that, so we're going to use it. Um, obviously we can't go shopping for cool new fabrics, so let's make work what we've got. Um, so that there is going to get used, more than likely. Um, this is our back brace template. Um, I don't know whether you've probably seen this on our Instagram and Facebook, but this is the template that we use. Um, it's one that I've mucked around with quite a bit, measuring bodies and backs, and that's a good average size, and it fits in really nice with the swoop. Um, when we make it out of aluminium, we bend this to fit the small of your back, and it's all padded. Um, I've decided I don't want to use the aluminium, but I have got over here, I've got heaps of this old packing plywood. Um, I know it looks rough there, but we only need this very small piece, and I'll probably double thickness it and glue it together and uh, cut the back brace out of that and that'll be really really strong and light um, it's hardwood plywood so it's really good um, i know it looks kind of rough at the moment but when it's all finished off and sanded and we've even got some um, dark wood dark sort of stain that will match the swing armature so it'll look really awesome so um, i will carry on with that this afternoon and keep doing update photos and get back to you with the next step shortly Look what I did, I sewed it. This is my first sail. Pretty good, eh? I did lots of practice first on some old scraps. And this is the first one I've sewn up and I'm really, really happy with it. Look at that, look at that for a seam. All the seams are in the inside because I did it as you should and then pretty much sewed it up 100% and then I just sewed up this little bit last after I um, turned it inside out. I'm pretty stoked. That'll certainly do me. Hello, Daniel here again from Tectonic Workshop. Um, finally finished these steampunk sailing boat aesthetic lockdown wing build that we did. Um, I've made these for my wife. They're completely 100% recycled materials. Um, so the timber and that I had in the workshop, that someone gave me some offcuts and I had to rip that down on the table saw and size it, etc. The plywood was some old packaging ply, which I had to glue and laminate up to make a bit thicker and stronger for the back brace. Um, I even had to make my own spaces up in, under the um, back brace mechanism here, and there was some hardwood timber as well. Um, bolts and nuts we had in the workshop already, and I've used some nice fancy gold cord here to string up the sails, which looks really nice, looks real flash, and sort of goes with the aesthetic. Um, but these are them. I'm so pleased with how they came up. Look at that. Pretty, pretty wings. We've had a lot of comments and thank you very much. Um, had a lot of people suggest that they look like um, the sort of old style Chinese porcelain that had the white and blue glaze on it. 
and I think that's true, they look really, really nice. So we're really happy with those. As I said, we did a photo shoot yesterday, um, so I'll be putting those photos up after this video. Um, also, I'll be, I've videoed this um, from start to finish, so it'll give you guys a good idea of how to build your own. It's um, the first time I've really had a go at a decent tutorial. Um, all the dimensions in that are available. Um, just give me a PM at the stage if you would like to build your own set and I can get you all the dimensions and information you need. We've just used some white ribbon at the moment as the straps to hold it to your back. Um, I'm going to be, when you have all the shops and that are open again after lockdown, I'm gonna be getting some better strap material. I think some nice little leather straps would look good. And also I'm gonna be getting some little brass pulleys and nice cord. So this will all run um, open and shutting with just some cords that you pull, um, which I think will look really nice. It'll go with this whole sailing ship sort of thing that we've got going on. Um, the wings open and shut really nicely. Um, there's one little loop of thread here that when you open and shut the wings, it likes to slide up and down this um, section of wing strut here, um, just with the way the sail works. And there's a wee piece here that wants to catch as well, which I've got to fix. But it's only very minor stuff. I'm going to replace this thread with a metal loop. Um, I'll get something after lockdown. And um, that will allow it to move up and down this member really, really smoothly. Just because it's thread, it catches a little bit on the timber grain. I did sand it down, try and lessen that effect, but it's just something that's going to happen. Um, but I'll close that down. You see that wee thread there? It just I don't know whether you can see that, but it just catches. But if you just gently help it out on its way to shutting, pull that one out there. And they shut up really nice, um, not a problem at all. Opening is less of an issue I find, um, but you'll see this thread here that gets snapped up. But um, yeah, once I put a wee metal ring on there, that's just gonna run really smooth, and I'll make sure that that piece of the um, timber is nice and smooth. But there we go, like so. Hoist the sails and we're away. So it's just like that, not a problem. Um, this one here might have dropped a wee bit too. But there we are. But they look really, really nice. We did a wee bit of a steampunk sort of a setup shoot yesterday. Um, my wife is really into steampunk stuff. We're just getting into it. And um, yeah, she's pretty excited about these. So my gift to her for allowing me to do this and sacrificing a little bit of bedding material. We used an old duvet that we don't use anymore. Um, for this fabric, which I just like, it looks really, really nice. It was one of those calls at the beginning. It was like, oh, I don't know whether it's going to look any good or not, but it's about all we had, so I thought I'll just go for it. And now they're finished. Wow, that really, really looks cool. Very antique looking. So thanks very much for following us. As I said, um, the tutorial will be available really soon. Any information you need about this build, just flick me a it's not a problem I'm happy to answer any messages and um, yeah we'll see you guys again soon I'm not sure, we, not sure whether I'm going to have another project over lockdown depends on whether I'm allowed out here <laughs> we've got a little boy who is uh, needing a lot of entertainment at this time because he's locked down and can't go to school so we've um, yeah I've been lucky enough to have been allowed to make this awesome we'll see you guys next time and say stay safe and um, yeah, hopefully things get back to normal very soon.